Don't start to call the set as soon as they finish, then they must inform him so they can call them. Yeah, that's the end. Yeah, they're ready. Can they're ready. They can call him now. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Thank <laughs> you. 
Good. Yes, it's
Step down. Yes. So when do you want us to? Oh yeah, you want to tell you? Yes, yes. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. 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 May it please the court, my lord, I appear for the state in this matter, together with my colleagues, Mr. Singh and Mr. Duploy. Thank you, Mr. Dana. This is my lord, I appear for the first accused in this matter, together with my learned friends, Mr. Masuku and Mr. Butelezi today, uh, instructed by two senior attorneys. Thank you, Mr. Mpofu. Thank you, my lord. Mr. Jackson, I appear on behalf of the second accused, and maybe whilst on my feet, my lord, you would not necessarily note, but there is a different representative on behalf of Talis in the dock. We have a resolution. The reason is that a previous representative is not available and we did not want to cause any delay in this matter. Uh, I beg leave to hand up the representative with, with Mr. Downer and also uh, with the other representatives. You would see that it makes provision also for a second representative, but just that's in case there's a problem when he's sick or whatever the situation is, can't be here for a day. The new representative, my lord, that you will see from the resolution is Mr. Olivier, and the pronunciation of the surname 
is uh, it's Mr. Oliver Kuzerka. Kuzerka, okay. Kuzerka. And we asked the court to consider to then accept him as the as the new representative. Yes. Shall we make this uh, a further exhibit? I think, I think we're down to exhibit E. Exhibit F. Um, if, uh, your, your Lord uh, uh, Registrar told me exhibit F. So this will be F. F, yes, my Lord. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord. Yes, the resolution passed by the Board of Directors of the second accused will be exhibit F. And uh, I've taken note of the fact then that Kuzerka is present here today. He is indeed. Thank Lord. you. Thank you, Kuzerka. Thank you, Mr. Roo. My, my Lord, could I, could I just say that that is in terms of section 3322B of the Criminal Procedure Act? And that, if your lordship has regard to that, it's strictly speaking at the application of the prosecutor. Now, yeah. I absolutely have no uh, problem with it at all, and thank so I uh, formally make that application. Thank I you for pointing that out. Thank you. Um, he is then so appointed as. Yes. The order of business, I think, Mr. Mpofu, you. You're correct, my lord. Yes. Yes. My, my lord, uh, if, I, if I may just start with a few housekeeping issues. Um, firstly, as we indicated to your Lordship in Chambers, uh, the, your Lordship will notice that uh, the first accused is not in court. Uh, there was a medical emergency which uh, took place um, in the past few hours, um, and we have the doctors, the situation is being attended to. Since we speak to you, uh, my lord, uh, been assured that we, we might get some kind of document later in the day. But be that as it may, the uh, proposal that we had discussed uh, in, in chambers was the possibility of being able to proceed in the absence of the first accused. And obviously, as I indicated to your lordship, I had to get instructions in that regard. I'm happy to announce, uh, my lord, that I have since received those instructions, and um, so we would be able, um, we will monitor the medical situation, but, um, I, and I've personally spoken to the Surgeon General, Surgeon. Yes. so I kept on calling him the District Surgeon earlier, <laughs> but he's the Surgeon General. And um, the uh, and he has given me uh, that assurance. The, the the basis, of course, of the agreement was that is similar to the previous one that we had, my lord. You will remember in September, where the accused had, um, although he was entitled to be present, for the sake of, of progress, uh, agreed that we could uh, argue the section 1061H um, on the. 21st and 22nd of September. Yes. Um, we, uh, Mr. Downer and I have identified the, the what we think is the correct section, uh, which incidentally also deals with governments, uh, but also deals with absence in general, as mm -hmm. section 159.2A, Roman 1, my lord. Yes. Yes. Uh, so yes, I, as I understand it, he's instructed you that the application for a, uh, an adjournment can proceed in his absence. That's correct. He waives his right to be present during those proceedings. Yes. Um, and yes. Because in, the in same any way. because in any uh, now, David Ballard, yes. as I say, we are exactly in the same position we were in September last year, where the. Practically, it's, a, it's an application, although we know it's in the criminal court. Um, yeah. The, yes. So yeah. that is the, it's, it's that same. But maybe Mr. Dana can confirm. Yes. That, that you confirm that, Mr. Dana. I have no objection. My yes. Lord. Then that uh, uh, Mr. Zuma is absent. Um, he's not in personal attendance. And has agreed to the matter proceed. Say the matter. The application for postponement or an adjournment proceed. That's correct. Right. Um, my Lord, oh, another housekeeping matter is that 
actually how we got to know all this is that last last night we were supposed to be consulting with uh, Mr. Zuma and he, he, he couldn't make it and one of the was of course he would have signed the supplementary um, affidavit that would have reached your lordship on Saturday. I've mentioned to Mr. Dow who have therefore not been able to have that signed in it being referred to, uh, if need be, the formality of, of filing a formal one would follow. Yes, I don't, Mr. <coughs> you confirm that? Confirm that, my Thank you. For, from my side, I don't have a problem with that. Um, the unsigned copy that I had, or that I was given, uh, referred to an annexure being the uh, cover sheet the, the, the of filing the <coughs> reconsideration application in yes. Bloemfontein. Yes, I obviously do not have that. And if that can be handed up and I can see the date on it, yes. then I'm satisfied. Part of the factual matrix is it, also it is done. Yes. My I Lord, was told it's the 8th. It, it is, my Lord. You can take it from me for now. We will generate that, but it's definitely stamped the 8th. It was um, uh, delivered. It was filed here on the 7th and with the other side, but delivered in Bloemfontein on the 8th. And uh, we, we will, your Lordship gets that, that copy. <clears throat> Yes, thank you. Thank you, my lord. My lord, uh, coming to the issue at hand, uh, my lord, this is a matter that really should not detain us for, for long. <coughs> and I'll just uh, uh, what I think are the, 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 the parameters, my lord. I've got about uh, parameters which I will use. Uh, hopefully not use all of them. The, the, the first one uh, relates to the, um, uh, the matter that is pending before the President of the Supreme Court of Appeal under Section 17.2F of the, of the Superior Courts Act. <coughs> that is referred to in the papers. Then, and, and that is the, the issue that we want to dwell a little bit on. No, that's the reconsideration application. That's the reconsideration. If we can refer to it as that. <laughs> to me, Mr. Mpofu, that the factual matrix here is pretty much common cause. Um, I delivered, or well, I gave a judgment um, dismissing the special plea. There was an application for leave to with certain adjunct procedures attached to it, which, uh, which was dismissed in February 16th, if 16th. I remember correctly. And... Um, Thereafter followed a petition, uh, an application to the Supreme Court of Appeal to obtain the required leave where necessary mm. in respect well, of, uh, of my main judgment. Mm. Um, and that was considered by two judges of the Supreme Court of Appeal mm. and was refused, uh, dismissed I think was the term used, on the um, 18th, was it? 30th. It, uh, sorry, the, 30, the 30th. The 28th, of, but it stamped the 30th. Yes, but yes. Nothing turns on. But, but last week, yeah, yes. and then um, following on from that, uh, an application for reconsideration, if I may term it that, in terms of Section 17.2F of the Superior Courts Act, uh, or pursuant to the provisions of, provisions of the Superior Courts Act, uh, 10 of 2013, was then, as you indicated earlier, issued on the 8th after having been issued or served here yes, on the 7th of April um, 2022 and uh, the issue really becomes one um, without wanting to limit your submissions yes. as to whether um, this has a discretion but to allow the appeal process to run its course. That's correct. And then I say the appeal process, i.e., that the Supreme Court of the President of the Supreme Court of Appeal uh, must consider and uh, reach a decision on this this application. The reconsideration. The reconsideration application, <clears throat> um, and that is the case that was made out, or well, the case initially made out in the application for an adjournment was based on the petition 
still being pending. It's up, yes. Um, that has now come and gone. It's been overtaken by events. But uh, from the correspondence, which I was copied as well from Mr. Tussini, Mr. Zuma's attorney, and the response of uh, the state from Mr. Downer, uh, it has been broadened to the extent that it now deals consideration application which is common cause it is there it's in existence and it's really the the consequence that needs to or that will flow from that That's um, yes. and that will entail more specifically a consideration amongst others of section 17 and it seems to me 18 of the superior courts act the initial application referred to section 18 fairly obliquely yes. sort of just at the end it wasn't the main thrust. Sure. ...application for an adjournment, um, but it's certainly grown in stature yes. in the heads of argument. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if we can focus our minds yes. perhaps on that, Thank you, my then, Lord. Um, but as I say, without limiting you, mm -hmm. but that seems to me to be the issue from having read the papers and having read the heads of argument. Yes. ...refer to any specific allegations in the affidavits well then obviously uh, you're at liberty to indicate as and when something happens um but it's as as my learned friends have correctly pointed out in their affidavit it's it's impossible to know how long those processes might take Mr. Mpofu, if i'm not with you on that point mm -hmm. and because this matter enjoys a lot of publicity correct um it's important that's correct. From the state's point of view, it's uh, important from Mr. Zuma's point of view. Yes, and the um, public. Prima facie, it seems to me there should be judicial oversight mm. of the future of this matter. Mm. And I am prima facie not disposed to adjourning at sine die. Mm. But to give it time, um, that's now if I should decide that the, the matter cannot proceed today. That's correct. Um, <clears throat> to some future date, um, to await the outcome of what's transpiring in the meantime. Um, I note what has been said about any further proceedings, but at the moment they don't exist. No, they don't. No. This application has to be decided in the context only of the reconsideration application. That is what's before the court, and that is the next process. Because what might happen thereafter, it might not be... It might not be pursued any further at all. It might not happen. Yes. In which case, uh, then everybody has to be brought back. And I don't know when it might be. Um, but uh, counsel might not be available anymore. Because at the moment, we have this term and the next term. So I'd like to hear you just on, on what, if I was disposed to adjourning the matter, what the date should be, if it's a specific date. Um, taking into account your experience and my experience and everybody's experience. Um, of these matters before the SCA. Um, petitions, we all know, are dealt with expeditiously. Yes. they within normally a couple of days, like in this matter. Um, I don't know how long the, uh, the president of the SCA might take to consider the reconsideration application. And obviously, we don't know what she might do. Um, to return it to the two judges on Well, the there, there are a number of possibilities. Um, if she should entertain the application, that might arise. So I'm prima facie, as I say, if an adjournment was to be granted, that uh, it will be for a month or six weeks or whatever the case may be, but to a holding date, um, on which day either the decision of the Supreme Court of Appeals president is still awaited or it might have been given and nothing further is developed, in which case the trial can proceed. Um, yes, I want to make it a holding date because uh, I don't know what the position is regarding Mr. Kuserka, but certainly if like uh, the previous representative, he's traveling from France, then I don't want to make it a wasted exercise. Yes. So I think one can model some sort of a an order that there's a holding date and if by that holding date it appears that the trial is ready to proceed that it'll continue say a week later start a week later 
Um, that'll address the concerns of the state with getting witnesses here at cost, and it'll also address the concern or the the uh, potential prejudice to the second respondent or part of their prejudice. Uh, I beg your pardon, the second accused that. Um, a trip is not made to this country unnecessarily. Do you have any comment on those those thoughts? Uh, my lord, I, I, I'm with your lordship. Uh, I, I obviously the the with so many uh, balls in the air that cries out for judicial supervision and uh, an obligation on our part, at least, to report to the court. Uh, therefore, my lord, uh, subject to what my learned friend has to say, I would, um, I'm just trying to visualize now my, my diary. Some, towards the end of May might be the comfortable time to do the holding date, and then we can take matters from there. Uh, let me just check with my... Um, yes, my lord. I know I have a problem in the first week of June, so it would have to be just before that. It's just um, the holding date. It's uh, as the, just you know, the holding date. Yeah, it's a holding date. Mm -hmm. On which date it will either be, well, in a week's time we start the trial, yes. and everybody get their witnesses and their representative here, yeah. or... Um, or report back it, on... It hasn't, mm -hmm. it hasn't uh, this, the President of the Supreme Court of Appeal is still considering her position, mm -hmm. um, or... She might have uh, directed some process to be followed, which might not have reached its ultimate conclusion. Um, one doesn't know. But a decision can be taken on that day, and either it's adjourned then to a further holding date, um, or, as I say, it proceeds. Agreed. Agreed, my lord. I have no problem. Okay. No, no, I, I've still got... Settle it later. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No, broadly, um, of course, without we can't give specifics yeah. because uh, we have to look at the others. But broadly, we are in agreement with that arrangement as a broad arrangement, yes. my lord. Holding date, report back, and then whatever happens, happens. And then yes. we will uh, then uh, explain to the court uh, what would have happened with the SCA process or any further process, if there's any further process. Well, at the moment, I'm going to I, I deal with this matter on the basis of what's before me. That, I appreciate that, my lord. Paragraph one of your application for an adjournment said the trial and all other related proceedings. Mm. It'll be the trial of course. if the order is granted is adjourned. Yes. You can't have an open-ended all other proceedings because what does that mean? Um, and it'll be um, that the trial be adjourned mm. pending the outcome of the reconsideration application. Yes, my lord. Uh, well, uh, if, if you're going to pursue something thereafter, mm. well, then it might require a short affidavit by a return date, or when I say return date, a holding date, mm. um, to explain that such a procedure has been invoked. But further procedures might not necessarily follow. They might not. It might depend on how the SCA treats it. Mm. The SCA, um, well, I think there's no better example than... Um, was it the application for a permanent stay? Moyo. No, but in this case, oh, yes, the the, the, for a in permanent this case, stay. yes, the, the uh, permanent petition, stay. petition was refused, mm. application to the CC, mm. but they're not persisted with. Mm. So that situation might arise. Let's not anticipate things. I, I'm going to deal with what's on the papers before me. Agreed, my lord. Your, your lordship cannot speculate so far no. into the future. That's the whole purpose yeah. of reporting back. Um, Mr. Mpofu, the only other point is. By going to the end of May, if that is the date, um, obviously the time for the trial, should it resume shortly thereafter, mm. is being condensed because at the moment um, what is being reserved are the second and third terms. And I would then suggest, if that was to be the order that would follow, that uh, the fourth term of this court's calendar year also be set aside for the purposes of the trial. Um, okay, my lord, can we try, maybe let's not resolve that now in, in court because that's going to involve a whole lot of issues and um, yes, what I'm trying to diaries. avoid. Yeah. What I'm trying to avoid last year when the special plea initially arose, I was prepared to deal with it mm. during the recess, mm. but I then remember. all kinds of counsel weren't available, and 
And if you start looking at the availability of counsel at the end of May as opposed to now, then it's becoming more problematic no, because it's close to time. Brother. No, I can commit to your lordship. I, I'm, I'm uh, as I say, if a, an adjournment is to follow, I'm fairly resolute on this point that I'm going to direct that it run to further in the year. Well, your lordship, of course, has the power to direct whatever yes. your lordship wants to direct. Yes. Uh, at least, it, but it can be directed with our agreement until I've spoken to... Well, that's what I'm to, hoping to, in, yes, to invite. To, to, as, as God pleases. Yes. My Lord, on, the, on that basis, uh, then those are our submissions, my Lord, and we uh, agree broadly with the with the practical uh, proposals suggested by your Lordship. If in the end the application is granted, yes, as God pleases. Thank you. Um, I suppose in the order of things, Mr. Uh, before I hear the state, Mr. Baru, you want to add anything? Yeah, nothing to add. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Dana, I think you've, uh, you've heard the, the exchange. Um, I've read your heads of argument and obviously the affidavits, and there are some very telling points that are made. But my primary difficulty was this question of a discretion, and whether I have a discretion where um, I had found, um, and I hope for good reason, that... Uh, the special the judgment on the special plea wasn't as yet appealable we're not in that realm anymore we are now on a section 17 2f reconsideration application which is expressly recognized in terms of the superior courts act and it seems to me then that section 18 1 must play a role um i, I see you said it was 18 2 that's the more correct one but I, it seems to me that the the outcome of this application is largely dependent on those considerations. And having said that, I'll leave it to you to make your submissions. Thank you, my Lord. Yeah, yes. that, that, certain, that certainly gets to the nub of the issue yes. and is a central difficulty which, which, uh, which faces the state and which faces your Lordship. And might I just say, my Lord, that um, first of all, our submission will be that uh, the discretion in terms of Section 168 remains despite whatever may be happening up the line in the Supreme Court of Appeal and the Constitutional Court in the 17, Section 17 and Section 18 realms. So the submission is yes, the discretion remains. It, the, the, the question simply is, how is the court to exercise that discretion? And that then takes us, uh, my Lord, to the particular circumstances of the current case. And might I just also say up front that my learned friend has conceded a concession if mala fides uh, were to exist. In other words, were, were this court to be of the opinion, and this is the state submission, that indeed this application, which currently is before this court, is mala fides in the sense that it is part of the Stalingrad defense and is meritless and is but one of those defenses which is raised continually without any prospects of success, knowing and, uh, by any proper reading of the law, and is nevertheless proceeded with. So it's, it's, in, it's, done, um, it's done in bad faith, it's done to delay in that sense. And we make this submission very seriously at this stage. Well, then it's, it's, it'll then be on the basis, correct me if I'm wrong, that 18.1 says it's suspended. But I must, I must then say, well, you can't, accuse number one, avail yourself of the benefits of section 18.1 because what you're doing is an abuse of, a, of process. Y yes, my Lord. And that's, okay. that's, yeah, that's this court's decision, my Lord. It doesn't, um, it, it's uh, whether, whether, whether 18 operates and suspends, uh, uh, and suspends the SCA's order um, uh, is, is just in the background. That, but that doesn't, that, that doesn't mean that there is no discretion in terms of section 168. And if I could just then develop the argument, my Lord. Right. And here, here I'm, I'm going to uh, just refer in some, uh, in some respects to our heads of argument. Yes, let me just get them. Um. And, and, and first of all, um, my Lord, uh, just up front, could yes. I refer your Lordship to, to the, what the SCA said, what, what, what uh, uh, Navsa, Justice Navsa ADP said, in, SCA, in, in, in the SCA in Zuma versus the Democratic Alliance case, 
the 2018 one SA 200 SEA, which is quoted that's, in our heads. That's the spy tapes. Yes, indeed, my lord. Which, which paragraph of your heads have you reached now, Mr... Uh, this, this is just by way of introduction. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, I thought you were going to refer me to yeah. this. But, but in, in the judgment there, um, he quoted T.S. Eliot, who said that... Oh, yes, that I remember He spoke that. with the current end of the unending. And so our, our principal submission is that should a postponement be granted, uh, today's date of the 11th of April 2022 will be yet another recurrent end of the unending, four years later, with any number more of recurrent ends in sight, without end. And this, despite today's date being agreed between all the parties as a trial date, without qualification, and which the court twice ordered as the date on which the trial must finally commence. Yeah, admittedly, that was before a petition was lodged. Yes, but it was after this court had, 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 uh, had, uh, uh, had, had given the judgment uh, it was part of the judgment on the leave to appeal. Yes, yeah. on, on, on the 16th of February uh, this year. So one would have expected that if, if, if the trial date were to be agreed upon, there would have been an agreement or an attempt at an agreement or an indication to the court, oh, but that's only a trial date if we do not yet have a result of the appeal from the SEA or from a 17.2F application to the president of the SEA. There was no such qualification. It was a trial date and it was agreed by all and, and and preparations are made on that basis. Uh, but then, that's not all, because today's agreed trial date came after nearly two decades of delays. And that is, that who has responsibility for those delays is a subject matter of many legal proceedings and many court pronouncements um, and argument. But nevertheless, there have been those delays for two decades. Um, and, and my Lord, To, to return to the heads, I, re uh, I refer to our heads at pages 31 to 39, that's <coughs> paragraphs 79 to 90, and there we deal uh, with the heading, a postponement being in the interest of justice or not. I think my learned friend and I are at idem that section 168 um, and the discretion which we say still persists um, is exercised which, uh, if in the end of the day the court regards it broadly in the interest of justice to do so, if it's expedient and uh, would, would serve the parties and the court and society. So we say then that the court has a discretion in terms of section 168, whether to grant the, the application and the interest of justice determine that the application should be dismissed. Um, we, we go on in our heads to say that the application for postponed was first to await the SA's order. And then once this order was dismissed on the 28th of March, the application changed being to await the further orders of the president of the SA and the constitutional court. Your Lordship has confined it only to the SEA proceedings. Uh, we would obviously agree with that because there's nothing else on paper and the constitutional. But it is an issue because whether or not the constitutional court application is proceeded with, it is a factor which the court can consider that potentially uh, lengthens the postponement sort and lengthens the number of proceedings which have to be completed before this trial at last can can proceed. No, but so it, we, might, it we, might never ha happen either. Indeed, my Lord. But nevertheless, um, as, and once again, if one looks at what happened, happens with the Constitutional Court application in this case, which your Lordship was referring to, which was ultimately withdrawn, um, the, the, um, the, in permanent the permanent stay, stay the permanent stay application, it was made and it, uh, it papers were filed, uh, periods had to go past, once more <clears> delays. Ultimately, it was withdrawn. And the question was, well, why was it made in the first place if it was to be withdrawn later? And our, our, our submission is that it is because it was always without merit and should never be made in the first place. And that uh, meritless application procedure applies to the various applications in this case. Um, and, and as I said, my Lord, uh, as our, 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 our heads say, this court found that the first application bore no reasonable prospects. And um, the other petitions were, were uh, dismissed in the SCA. So the SCA did, if one doesn't take account of uh, the application of, of, uh, of Section 17 and the effect of Section 18, perhaps, the, the SCA has ruled that and agreed with your Lordship and in, uh, enforced your Lordship's uh, findings that there are no reasonable prospects of success. And that and was a final decision. And that, that was, a, yeah, that was a final decision. And so, um, 
we say that the lack of reasonable prospects is based into alien on this court's finding that neither the CPA nor the Superior Courts Act provide for an appeal in a criminal case at this stage of the trial before an accused is convicted. The enactment of the Superior Courts Act that effectively disallowed criminal appeals to the SCA before conviction was designed to prevent piecemeal appeals and delays in criminal matters. So we, our, our heads go on to say that should the application for postponement be granted here in this court under, in terms of Section 168, pending the result of the applications to the President and uh, any further leave to the Concord, which we've discussed, uh, the effect in delaying the trial will be, will, will be to achieve what this court, the SCA, the legislature, and the interests of justice seek to avoid. And that, that is, is perhaps our, our main point, my Lord. This, it makes this case uh, special, given its, given its background and the delays, uh, and the effect of, of the countless applications, all of which have been refused. So you are quoting from paragraph? Uh, um, a Lord, I'll have to. I'll have to get the. Uh, okay, I'm no, summarising right. it. No. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. But but so, the, if 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 in a case such as the present, appeals during the trial are not allowed, policy reasons say that that's good. Your lordship has found that that is good. The SCA has confirmed that that is so. If this application for postponement is granted pending further appeal procedures, that means that the effect of your Lordship's judgment, uh, giving effect to the policy of the legislature and good uh, order in court trials, that that, that, that uh, would be frustrated. And that is a central frustration in this case because we just see, can't seem to get anywhere because even though the law doesn't allow what is now happening in this court, nevertheless, this court uh, is being asked to postpone the matter. Well, and maybe if the law doesn't allow it, you say, but what about section 17 f clearly deals with and allows a situation of a reconsideration. Absolutely, my Lord. And that, but that happens in another court. And happens it, in another court, yeah. but uh, mustn't that procedure be allowed to run its course? Well, that, that is essential. In, in, yeah. in the absence yeah. of a clearly um, abuse of a process, mal of fides, etc., um, which, which I, I, I hear, and I'm very alive to the fact that this matter runs for many years, and there are many many decided cases um, and their frustrations that have been experienced but uh, can I can one exercise a discretion to say well a statutory ordained appeal process should be forfeited unless it's the strongest possible evidence to suggest that it's being abused yeah. Well, number one, and again, my Lord, we say that it is being abused, and we, we develop that argument yes. in our heads. And second of all, we say it's not a denial of the right ha uh, uh, happening in the other courts, because what this court does in this case by refusing the postponement will have no effect on the Section 17.2F application for which this postponement is sought. The, it won't affect whether the SCA makes a decision, and it won't affect uh, whether any further appeals are, are, are lodged. The SCA will continue doing and considering the papers before the SCA. But what about the uh, provision in the legislation that it suspends the operation and execution? Well, it doesn't suspend the operation and execution of this court's... Uh, no, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. When it refers to... Sorry to interrupt you. When it refers to suspending the operation and execution, it refers to the decision being appealed, which is the decision of the two judges in the SCA. Yes. Sorry, not appealed. Yeah, being considered. Yes. Absolutely. You're, no, yes. quite right, my Lord. So it's no. not this court's decision? No, not this court's decision, no. So it has that section 1718 procedure um, has no effect on this court's, um, it has no legal effect. It doesn't suspend this court's order. And it doesn't suspend uh, this court then continuing in carrying out and executing this court's own order. And, it, and it, that, that, that was the, the first one. The second point is that um, uh, it, it, it doesn't affect the fair trial rights of the accused because the appeal is continuing in the SCA to the president of the SCA in terms of section 17.2F and later even the constitutional court. But this court's proceedings here today and the, the, this court's decision and the trial proceeding, if this court were so to determine, has no effect on the, on the accused exercising his rights in terms of the higher court's hierarchy when rather anonymously the provisions of the Superior Courts Act, which don't apply in this court, do apply in other courts. But if it suspends the operation of the, the order on petition, in other words, the order of the two judges and the SCA, 
then that means there's no decision on the petition. Well, because that decision has been suspended. Indeed. So then one is yeah. dealing with a situation where there's a pending petition. Yes. And does that not suspend? Well, well, well. We would know. We we would also say that um, that uh, that this court is is within the realms of the of the Criminal Procedure Act, and this court's order is not suspended, because this court's order remains. So it, it's the very particular circumstance of the current case, um, which is based then at, at the next part of our heads, which is where we develop the argument relating to the Stalingrad defence, and that's my lord at uh, page 31 to 47. In paragraph 79 to 120, your lordship will be very your lordship will be very alive to the issues there. Your lordship has been through it all before. It's simply a summary um, of, of all the um, of all the cases where there have been comments which, generally speaking, are adverse to the Stalingrad strategy in, gen in general, and particularly to the accused Stalingrad strategy in the current case. And that's what that makes this case uh, peculiar, because. Uh, my Lord, what the state is trying to impress upon the court is that here we have a case which is the, which, which is the origin which, of much of the authority uh, which tells courts with very good reason not to entertain delaying tactics. This is the very case. And yet we get to another delaying tactic and because of uh, the application for postponement in this very case where we are told by the courts all courts, particularly courts in this case, we are told don't do it. Do not entertain uh, delaying tactics and further postponements which have the effect of delaying justice and which, uh, um, which, uh, er which erode the public's confidence in, in the system of justice because it's a yet another postponement in a long running series of postponements and is yet another unending end of the end. Uh, As regards the eroding of confidence, the solution might lie in uh, rather statutory amendments. Indeed, the, Lord. yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And and I think you know, you I, th I think we're all aware. Yes. Uh, divorce it from the facts of the present case for the moment. Um, there are instances where, um, certainly as a judge, I can sit and write what I think is hopefully a very persuasive judgment with reference, extensive reference to authorities, um, particularly in a civil context, and written as persuasively as I can. And then um, I get a two-page notice of application for leave to appeal that says the judge failed to attach sufficient weight to the authorities referred to. And that suspends my entire judgment, my considered judgment, for weeks and weeks and weeks. And one can understand the frustration of the, of the public um, but maybe the solution there lies, as I say, in statutory amendment. Maybe it's something for the Law Reform Commission to consider. But, uh, my Lord, yes, I would agree fully with your Lordship. But, but fortunately, I would say, and this is our submission, the, the, the legislature has stepped in in criminal cases. It has. So we say that in that respect, the, the amendment of the Superior Courts Act, uh, 10 of 13, which removed Chapter 5 criminal proceedings from the ambit of the, the Superior Court Act uh, appeal provisions, that, as your Lordship has already found, and, and it's, it's obviously correct, that that was done, designed, re in reaction to the tint judgment in this very case. So your Lordship has found in the, um, in, in the main judgment. And w the, the reason for that is because of the policy that the legislature said we are sick and tired of criminal cases being postponed for reasons of appeal which ultimately turn out to be, to be um, uh, um, unsuccessful and not groundless, and yet delay proceedings. So, so our, our very strong submission to your Lordship is that this is precisely the case where this court, my Lord, with great respect, is entitled to exercise discretion in, one, in terms of 168, as it did in the main and leave to appeal judgments, to say, unfortunate as the accused might, found it, might find it, his right to appeal during this case before his conviction unfair as he might find it, or as inconvenient as he might find it, because it means that his trial has to start, that there is a solution which has been offered, which this court has found and given effect to, and which is frustrated should this court grant a further uh, postponement in terms of 168. So in very short, in the bottom line, my Lord, is that we're saying that the solution is there, even though it's imperfect, 
and, 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 and is bedeviled by the reintroduction of the Superior Courts Act at appeal court level to criminal cases. Um, and, and that might be a problem. But fortunately, our submission is that this court does not have to be caught up in that problem. And the solution is indeed to take account of our submissions relating to the context of this matter. Um, the, 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 and, and that brings us also on to the, the merits of the application, my Lord. Yeah. And I hear, I, I'm, I'm entirely um, sympathetic, my Lord, uh, uh, to my learned friend's problem and, and this court's problem, that um, the, this court obviously is not, is not the appeal court. It's not the two judges and it's not the president of the, of the Supreme Court of Appeal. But nevertheless, this court, um, having made the, uh, having, having delivered its judgment in the, um, in, in the section 10611H application and the leave to appeal judgment, has formed views as to the merits of the 10611H application. And those views remain. And this court can gain, gain comfort from the fact without going into the legal suspension of it. But the SCA and the two judges of the SCA have indeed agreed with it. So all of that is this court's discretion, and this court is not bound not to exercise a judgment um, on the papers which are before your lordship. They're put before your lordship by my learned friends. So your lordship has all the, all the, um, has the application, and we submit um, in paragraphs um, 6 to 12, in our heads at pages 6 to 12 in paragraphs 18 to 30, we submit that this court is quite properly um, may quite properly have regard to those, um, to the merits of the, of the application. And we develop our argument, we submit strongly, that the, those, the submissions have, have problems. And, and just to be short, my Lord, the, the gross error, we say, if, uh, it, in, in, my law, in my learned friend's papers, they say that the SCA committed a gross error by calling, uh, by saying that the application had been dismissed as having no reasonable process of success and there being no other circumstances, and that they don't know, does this mean, is it, which application is it? Is it the 1061H application? Is it the other applications for reservations of questions of law, etc.? Is it a petition? Or is it, it, and we just say um, in our heads at those pages that if you analyze it properly, it, it really is just a made-up application. There is no confusion. And uh, it just appears uh, to, be, to be an attempt to put um, the application in the realm of exceptional circumstances when really there is no such except there are no such ex exceptional circumstances and the so-called error is not an exceptional sexual circumstance. So it's, 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 um, it, it is um, not a proper application falling within those grounds. But whether there are exceptional circumstances ultimately will be decided by the president of the SCA. Absolutely. But, it's but, that decision. Of course, my Lord, um, but this, it is put before your Lordship and, and uh, uh, we submit that, 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 that the, uh, the lack of merit in the application is obvious. But it's this court's view of that and this court is not supplanting its, uh, its judgment or trying to impose its judgment on the other courts, obviously. Um, yeah, and then we deal in our heads at, at, well, my learned friend doesn't develop the utterances of the NPA. I'm not going to, to refer to that at pages 15 to 16 and 35 to 36 of our, of our heads. Do you want to say anything about section 18.2 that you relied upon? Uh, yeah, my Lord, yes. We, uh, we say that, uh, that, that uh, section 18.2 is the one, is the spirit of section 18.2. Uh, but the, the, ref the reference to not having the effect of a final judgment? Well, in the in the in the in the, uh, in, the in the in the in the Supreme Court of Appeal, yes, but uh, but this, but not in this court. No, no, no. But what we're talking about being suspended there is the order yeah. of the the two judges in the Supreme Court of Appeal. Yeah, no, we've, we've and that made was final well, in effect. Yeah, well, we've we've made the concession that it, it's really immaterial whether it's whether it's in terms of one or two. Oh, I see. That, okay. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, my Lord, we also deal in our heads at uh, pages 17 to 18 at paragraphs 41 to 43, uh, the fourth new ground of um, the charges against me, but my learned friend hasn't developed them. And your Lordship, I think, um, has quite correctly, with great respect, confined the issues uh, to this court in terms of the application to the Supreme Court of Appeal. Um, Yeah, so, and, and then we also uh, 
deal with the accused with the accused replying affidavit filed on the 10th of April, which were after our heads, there's no need for me to do so because the the uh, my learned friend hasn't relied on them and the no. issues are confined. To me, and that's why I dealt with it at the outset, the factual matrix within the confines of which this application is to be considered are those that I referred to earlier on. Indeed. It's a section 17 2F application. Yeah. It's the petition, no. the refusal of it, and the application for reconsideration. Yeah. So, so just to sum up then, my Lord, uh, we, we, we seriously make the submissions that this is a very special case and it, it simply makes no sense where this case is the one that has bothered uh, courts, has bothered the legislature. The legislature has changed the law to accommodate the types of, um, of, of irregularities which are, and unfortunate situations that have happened in this case and it is the very case which, which allows this court to exercise its discretion in in terms of section 168 and to allow the state to get on with the trial and all the parties in the interests of everyone this court and the, and the public as it pleases the court below. if i am disposed to granting the adjournment um i take it should it be sine da or to a specific date i take it you would support the latter is it absolutely uh, and that that Kotenberg judgment which we put up and which my learned friend refers to from the western cape it's a it's a it's not exactly in point because it, is an, it, it refers to an appeal, not a criminal case which is pending. And they're very different considerations which apply to the, to the um, finalization of appeals. Um, and we would say that uh, in criminal cases in general, and particularly in this, in this very case where we were beset with problems in finalization, that um, I, I've, I heard your Lordship's comments that uh, naturally this court should, uh, should, remain, should retain judicial control. Yeah. And, and we don't, our submission is that uh, sine die actually uh, is not an option open to a court in a criminal case uh, such as the present which is part heard and has already commenced. And if you look at, at, at section 168, it, it says there in terms that the court may postpone the matter to a date. Yes. Now a sine die no date is not a date. Mm -hmm. So we, we say that apart from criminal appeals, um, a criminal trial must be postponed to a particular date. The and notion of a holding date with the matter proceeding thereafter, is uh, any comments on that? Uh, my Lord, uh, we're in your Lordship's hands. We, we are as, and in the dark as, as the court and my learned friend are about how long it takes the SEA. We were surprised, not surprised, we were, we were um, happy to see that, that the SEA gave judgment, uh, with the two judges gave judgment soon and delivered it on the 28th. Uh, I, think, I think the uh, uh, affidavits from Mr. Zuma's side have referred to it as uncharacteristic, um, but <laughs> yes. uh, uh, it, I don't, from personal experience, don't find it uncharacteristic because petitions get distributed and they normally dealt with within a couple of days, indeed, even right. less than this. Yeah. So I don't know that it's uncharacteristic, but anyhow, yeah. it, that's yeah. by the by, it's not important. Absolutely. So, so but it, 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 apparently the papers go to the judges every, every Tuesday and uh, the judges deal with them um, yeah. as soon as they get them. And it depends on the nature of the papers and the quality and the length. I, I would submit, my lord, that given your lordship's judgment, judgments, uh, that that it is possible that it could be sooner rather than later. One would hope. Any suggestion on a holding uh, date? Yeah, uh, uh, it's been suggested maybe the end of May. Yes, the end of May. Would, Towards would, the end of May. Yeah, I've got my diary with me. Perhaps we could take the adjournment and just and just work out the. Sorry, I didn't watch the the yeah. time. Has that concluded your submissions? Yes, my lord. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Mpofu, shall we uh, take the short adjournment now? Um, a lot, uh, um, well, before or after my reply? Before your reply? We can, t yes, my lord. We, we can. Um, I'm happy to continue and hear your reply. Yes. I don't know how long it's going to be. I presume not too long. Well. Um, but it's subject to the, uh, to whether council require a comfort break at this point. No, they don't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, that, no, no, All right. That, well, then deal with your reply, and we can uh, we can deal with the matter thereafter. Yes, my lord. Uh, uh, Mr. Mpofu, it was explained to me this morning that um, the machine needs to be stopped every now and again, so that if there's a problem with recording then it's a shorter interval that might have to be reconstructed or whatever. So we're just going to do that.
to stop it and then it will resume. But we can all just remain and see to as we okay. are. Uh, just, just, just don't talk and it uh, it'll be indicated when we can start again. Okay. You may continue, Mr. Sorry. You may continue, Mr. Mpofu. Thank you, my lord. My lord, yes. Uh, unfortunately, your lordship stopped me from um, dealing with some of the points. But seeing that my learned friend has covered those points, then I have no choice but to, to deal with them. Um, my lord, Sorry, but Mr. before... Mpofu, I, didn't, uh, I didn't think I stopped you, but... Uh, I actually invited you to raise other points as well. Yeah, so, well, be that as it may, I'm um, taking the invitation now. Yeah. Okay, that's fine, my lord. No, no, what I understood from that, my lord, the reason I didn't develop the other points is because I thought your lordship was confining it to that point. But now we've gone to Stalingrad and all sorts of things, yeah. <clears throat> so we, we're going to have to deal with that. <clears throat> well, I think it's more appropriately perhaps dealt with in reply. Yes. You accepted, you accepted that uh, the protection of Section 18, if one should refer to it as protection, the, the effect of Section 18 uh, might be lost in instances of mala fides. No, and I, think, I didn't say that, my lord. Well, not mala fides, but if it's abused. Yes, if it's abuse of... Pro I said, my lord, let me maybe say it myself here. Yeah. I said that if you look at it from the point of view of section 17 and 18, then your lordship will have no discretion. Mm -hmm. But I considered that if your lordship can't, uh, neither can I, rewrite section 168, which uses the word may. Mm -hmm. So clearly there is some kind of discretion. It might be illusory, it might be limited, but the, the word may can only mean that. Yeah. And then in light of that, I then, in light of that concession, I then said, my lord, even in those cases, it would be in the cases of clear-cut malafides. Yes. And I think my letter friend has summarized and, it correctly. And, and that's what he picked up on. Yes. yes. All right. And well, that you then, want to reply to now. Yes. Le, le, uh, let me st start with that then, my lord. The, the issue of, of malafides, and your lordship is quite correct that it's better... Um, dealt with in the blight because of where the onus lies, as I will show your Lordship now. And as we said in our heads, really that's the only defense that has been raised. And let's just make short thrift of it. Fortunately, my Lord, the, this, what they've called the Stalingrad uh, defense has been defined and the Lordship hit the nail on the head just now. There's a case that uh, was discussed, was uh, decided last week or so in the High Court of South Africa Division in, South, uh, uh, um, in Johannesburg. It's case number 13276-2014, my lord. Uh, I'm sorry, I only got this uh, the, the, this morning, so I'll... I'll um, give my learned friends a, a, a copy. But the, the point I make is not a big academic HE point. This was Judge Makume. It's Mutumwa Mawere versus IDC and others. Your brother Makume J in Johannesburg said the following at paragraph 15. <clears throat> the history of this matter clearly indicates the deliberate abuse of court process by the applicant he not only ignored the court orders and directives that I issued and has instead mounted a protracted Stalingrad type of process aimed at preventing the IDC from executing a judgment in its favor. The only thing I want to pick out, my Lord, is what your Lordship said correctly, that uh, th that type of defense in normal language, in Stalingrad is like a term of fashion, is really abuse of court process uh, for an ulterior uh, motive. Now, I don't want to go through the seven uh, reasons we have put in our heads why that defense cannot be sustained. All I want to say is this, my lord, that the abuse of process, as we all know it, 
is defined uh, as follows. It's defined in the case of Bay Nash versus Wixley, that your lordship knows about, 1997, bracket 3 SA, 721 SCA, um, especially at 734H. It was also referred to in another case, my lord, called SA Coters, Coters, C O A T E R S, PTY LTD versus St. Paul Insurance Company Limited, 2006. Uh, rather, I'm sorry, 2007 6 SA 628. Sorry, I, I just, for some reason I don't have the division here, yeah, but if I'm, I stand corrected, I think it's the SCA. The bottom line was that a party that is suggesting abuse of court bears the, the uh, onus to establish that uh, completely and establish it uh, particularly in a case like this where it is being uh, flagged as the sole the sole um, uh, motive the ulterior motive so it's not something that is lightly made by 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 the courts from newspaper articles and corridor gossip there must be a, a discharge of an onus and nothing in this particular case has been put um, so even if there was such a, a discretion, the court would easily be able to determine that the onus has not been uh, discharged. More so, if, as we all now agree, it's common cause that the first accused is exercising his appeal rights as provided for uh, in the Superior Courts Act, as provided for in the Constitution, and um, as provided for even in section 34 of the constitution so it is not clear unless if he is a special type of person who's not allowed to appeal unlike other human beings and uh, there's no case that has been made for that <clears throat> then my lord the your, your lordship is quite correct my learned friend is making a mistake you cannot even deal with the issue of prospects of success or the merit or meritlessness or whatever of the um, reconsideration application. The law is very simple, my Lord, and the law should be quite correct. Maybe uh, there should be a statutory um, amendment. And in fact, to be fair, our courts have effected that amendment in the context of uh, Section 18.1. The Lordship will know that the statute itself only puts three standards, exceptional circumstances, no uh, harm to the one and no harm to, uh, to the other. But the courts have developed a fourth standard which is not in the, in the statute, which is uh, prospects of success. Correctly so, <coughs> uh, because it's a gap, as the Lordship says. Because the statute doesn't say if you bring a, merit, a, a merited appeal, it says if you bring a application for leave to appeal, full stop, then it's, uh, it's, it's, it's suspended. But what my learned friends are busy doing, my lord, is to try and bring to this court a section 18.1 application through the back door. You cannot do that. There's no section 18.1 application before you, and therefore, by operation of law, the, the judgment is suspended. If they wanted to bring an 18-1 and talk about prospects of success and exceptional circumstances and what have you, they are free to do so. They, 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 they can do it tomorrow if, if they want. But they can't sneak it through the back door. Um, so that's the, 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 the first point. Secondly, this notion of <laughs> trying to unscramble the egg cannot work, my lord. You cannot say that this, the judgment of the of the of the two judges is suspended but the underlying judgment which is the real one being appealed against is not suspended what is that the the the, the it is true that primarily sec section 18 one would operate as it, as i said earlier against the, the section 17 counterpart so to speak but the reality is that that which is being appealed against is your lordship's judgment and that is effectively what is so if, if your lordship said return the car and then that and then we go and petition and then it's suspended then i don't re return the car 
unless if there's a section 181 uh, application. So that's an artificial distinction with no meaning whatsoever. Mo mo uh, moreover, my lord, the, your lordship's judgment, um, I'm sorry, just. the leave to appeal one or the, the yes the, the second one my lord yeah and i'm looking specifically at the order i actually took it out and put it uh, okay lord should be just bears with me <coughs> okay thank my lord um It's part of the it's part of the reconsideration of, application. Of the, yes, and, and the and the petition. <laughs> so the logic goes to paragraph one thirty nine of the judgment, uh, the February judgment. <laughs> then you'll see that the states 139 uh, yes 139 mm -hmm. that's the order yes the state's argument here is not only disingenuous my lord it actually flies in the face of the logic of what was uh, decided by your lordship now they're saying no there was one application or here it's used in the singular and what have you your lordship was very clear he says i issued the following orders one the application for leave to appeal and all related applications, applications in, in a plural, which include the application to adduce further evidence on appeal, uh, the application for leave to appeal to the SCA on the grounds of section 317, special entry, and so on and so on. So the Lordship was very clear that he was not granting an a, a, a application in respect of one uh, matter, but of four different matters. The SCA has unfortunately uh, created a, an ambiguity which was unnecessary because all they really could have done is to look at your Lordship's order and use the same uh, grammar of the applications. But what they say is that the application is uh, dismissed and the words they used are the giveaway, my Lord. They say because there are no reasonable prospects and no other compelling reasons. Where do those words come from? Section 17.1 of the, of Superior, the Courts Act. Superior Courts Act. So it's very clear that they did not consider anything else except the application for leave to appeal. They did not consider the application to adduce further evidence, the special entry, and the, and the 319. We may be wrong, of course, my yeah, lord. I'm not sure whether you're right on that because- Well, I'm not sure either, but the petition, that's not the point. The petition was one application. <laughs> Sorry, I still use the old words, yes. petition. There was an application for leave to appeal yeah. to the SCA and then it referred to the petitions mm. and and the petitions included then amongst others the ones on 317 319 as provided for in terms of 3175 of the criminal procedure act but no. the long and the short of this mr Mpofa, i don't think we need to debate it no we don't. because i can't express a view on that yeah that that's the, the president of the sca will say your submission about it that they only dealt with one is fallacious yeah. or she might say no it's good yeah. But I can't answer that. Yes. What your point is, we must await the outcome of her decision. That's my point, yeah. my lord. But because yeah. so, Mr. So what Downer, it means, because Mr. Mean, Downer addressed it and called it, uh, what did he call it? Um, a, a, a meritless, a made up application. I have to, your lordship has to allow me to deal with that because that's an insult apart from anything else. So I'm saying that, my lord. You're quite right. Yeah, I'm, not, you, I'm, not, I'm not precluding you from dealing with it. I'm just yes. saying that it's not within my domain. Yes. In, and my Lord, you know that that is what we said in our, in our heads. We've said two things, which are points of law. One, your Lordship does not have the jurisdiction to uh, consider the prospects of Sussex in a higher court. That would be disrespectful out of, uh, apart from anything else or, or, or lack of, of difference. So I agree with your Lordship. The second one we've said on the issues themselves, your Lordship is functus officio. You can't revisit 
your, your judgment because you've already given it. That's not what we're, we're here about. So on both the jurisdiction ground and functus of Fukio rule, your leadership is quite correct. You are precluded from revisiting those. But I'm just saying that in this court, it was said that this is a so-called made-up application. And I'm, uh, I have to respond to that uh, by explaining that um, the, your lordship your, himself used the plural applications. They themselves, uh, the, the, the state, used that, uh, that uh, before they became uh, clever after the fact. In their answering affidavit, you will find about um, <coughs> six references where they talk about the petitions and the applications. And of course now, uh, after last week, they've now changed. That's disingenuous. That's just clear uh, disingenuity. So uh, the, the, the application, whether it will succeed or not, uh, logic is quite correct, but it, 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 nobody standing here can say that the SCA has uh, dismissed the one or, or two or three or four applications. And, and it might be a question of clarification even at that level. Uh, my Lord. Right. So that just shows that even if your Lordship was entitled to look at prospects of success, then uh, it would be, uh, at least the case would be arguable. The next thing, my Lord, is that um, it is said that your Lordship, the, 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 the second order that your Lordship gave that day was that the trial would start today. That order is also susceptible to what I've just said, because that order is also part of the symbiotic relationship between the appeal itself and the uh, uh, decision of the of no, the. It's S obviously an order that I made on that day. Correct. The facts as they existed. Yes. And the stage of the proceedings that had been reached. All things being yeah. equal. Correct. So, but the point I'm making a bigger point, my lord, which if, is that if, if that order itself is suspended ipso facto. Uh, because of the of the effect of section 18, and uh, if if we, if we accept that the, the there's one transaction here, it's, it's your lordship's judgment, uh, uh, and then it's the it's the um, SCA uh, decision, and then uh, it's the it's the uh, the impact of section 18. But I don't want to dwell. Uh, on that much. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that, but anyhow, um, well, I, 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 I take it on the decision that's suspended is clearly the one by the two judges. Yeah, but yeah. My Lord, no, no. yes, I don't want to debate this, but I mean that that's just that would be so artificial as is the example that I'm saying. If you can say the decision of the SA is suspended, but the underlying decision, which is the one Therefore about whether revives. Is, uh, is is not suspended, what no. is that? How can that be, my Lord? No, it, I hear you. That's I hear illogical. I understand that submission. As the court pleases, my lord. Please. So um, the, then, um, my learned friend went on about two decades. I'm not going to entertain that. We were not here two, two decades ago. The issue now is that the trial has started, and um, the, we know that as he has done today, and this I have to say, my lord, this uh, gratuitous insult of. Uh, ulterior motive and Stalingrad and delays and so on is not borne out by the evidence before your lordship. I don't know what happened in other courts. But before this court, my lord, uh, Mr. Zuma has consistently done everything in his power for this matter to proceed. On the 21st and 22nd of September, while he is entitled to be sitting here when we were doing the section 106, he gave your lordship permission, he waived his rights. Those were the words that were used. He waived his rights to be in court so that the matter may proceed. Today he has done the same thing. Anyway. <clears throat> the, so my lord, the, far from any uh, suggestion of uh, Mr. Zuma trying to do all the things that he's being uh, accused of, the evidence before your lordship is, uh, is the exact opposite of a person who is uh, uh, prepared to even waive his own constitutional rights so that the matter may, may proceed. Um, prospects we've dealt with. Yes, uh, really, my lord, all I can say is that uh, the, 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 the answer might well lay in, uh, in a statutory 
uh, amendment. I just want to, before I sit down, if your lordship allows me, just to refer your lordship to some of the references in the in the um, um, answering of the David. Sorry, my lord. I'm sorry, my lord. This uh, it's something I have to do. Otherwise, I won't be able to sleep at night. If your lordship goes to the records of these proceedings, you will find the answering of the David at um, page 21. Answering of the David? Yes, the state's answering of the David. Yeah. Page 21. It's, it starts at page 21, my lord. I'm the one that's. Uh, fellowship goes to page two. Tab to page two, which is. Uh, page 22. This is the state themselves. They say, in summary, the grounds of opposition, this is before they, this uh, newfound. Uh, uh, gr grammatical Damascus moment. They say, in summary, its ground of opposition, that is our grounds, are the following. 6.1, the petitions to the SCA do not suspend all the proceedings in the criminal trial. So they themselves uh, uh, used it in the, in, the, in the plural. The following page, 6.5, my lord. They say, this is Mr. Duploy's affidavit. The state respectfully considers that the grounds raised in the petitions do not provide the, the court with any reason to alter such a finding. It is not in the interest of justice to postpone the current trial to allow the petitions to the SCA uh, to, to run their extended courses. 6.6, um, the same thing. The state contends that the current application for an adjournment pending the outcome of the petitions to the SCA the heading below that, whether the petitions to the SCA suspend the continuation of the trial. Seven, Mr. Zuma's four petitions to the SCA are framed as follows, and so on, and so, and so it goes. So it's just pure uh, disingenuity to now uh, tell us that uh, it has been referred to in the singular when they themselves knew that there were four separate uh, p petitions. Um, and I've already shown that even your lordship in the judgments also used the, the plural, which everyone should have. And maybe the SCA, all they could have done is simply that if they had said the applications or the petitions, there wouldn't be this ambiguity. But as we sit here, there is now. Um, my understanding, my lord, was that the, the Mr. Downer is not opposed to the to the regime that we discussed but obviously he needed to look at his uh, diary so what i would then propose subject to what mr downer has to say is that we take the adjournment so that we can compare diaries and then we that's not in the event of the postponement being granted. in the in the event of it being being granted yeah. well can you do that sorry mr downer yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> so just to, just to be of assistance just uh, we've looked at our diaries and and uh, four weeks would bring us to either the 17th of May, which is a Tuesday, as a provisional day, or the 24th, a week later, which is All a right. Tuesday. Have you got uh, information on that, Mr. Mpofa? 
Somebody's trying to give you a note there from. Yes, my lord. Um, so that'll be a holding date. My lord, yes, could we, can we do the earlier date? I, I know that I've got something on the 23rd or 24th. Uh, can we do the 17th? 17th. Yes. Yes. Does that conclude all the submissions to be made? On our side, my lord, does the court please? Um, I'll take the adjournment. I just want to reflect on the arguments. And I'll give my order, um, possibly with brief reasons, but otherwise detailed reasons to follow later, although it's an interlocutory. Um, either later or then in the final judgment, if there's, if there's one. Um, I'll do that at two o'clock. Quarter rise. Uh -huh.